Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. This is the Isotech IPS 3303D bench power supply from RS Components. What you see here is the contents of the box all laid out. It comes with two power cables, one for UK use and one for use in mainland Europe. I won't be using that today, so I'll take that out. It also comes with uh, three different manuals, each of which cover two languages, so I only require the English one, but looks like you've got Italian, Spanish, and some other stuff there as well, so I won't be requiring those two today either. That leaves us with three sets of leads, two like this, which have alligator clips, well insulated alligator clips at one end, and these spade type connectors at the other end, and one like this where you've got banana connectors and alligator clips at the other end. So that's all the bits. Now I'm going to power it up and we'll take it for a spin. But just before we do that, just before we power it up, let's take a look at the back. On the back here where I'm zooming in now, you'll see there is the AC voltage selector. What you need to do is make sure that the these two selectors are in the right position for the voltage in your country. You've got various different options 100, 120, 220 and 230 and I've got 230 volts in the UK so that means that the top one should be in that position which it is and the bottom one should be in that position which it is. A-OK. -OK. Great, let's connect it up and start using it. OK, let's power it up. Here's the on off switch down here tells you it's a 3303D and now it's ready for use. Okay, so basically we've got three outputs. Channel 1 plus and minus, channel 2 plus and minus. These two are both uh, adjustable and on the third channel this fixed channel, if the outputs are here, can be 2.5 volts, 3.3 volts or 5 volts with a maximum of 3 amp output the other two channels, channel 1 and channel 2, you can vary the outputs continuously between 0 and 30 volts for each of those and you can vary the current maximum up to 3 amps for each of those as well. On top of that you can connect channels 1 and 2 together either in serial to give you a higher voltage output or in parallel to give you a higher current output. So over here we've got the voltage adjustment dial for channels 1 and 2 and you'll notice at the moment this LED where it shows fine is illuminated. So if I twiddle, it's set on channel 1 at the moment, so if I twiddle that dial you'll see this number changes in increments of 0 0.1 volts. Okay, so that's the fine adjustment. If we press this dial in it becomes coarse adjustment and it will change in one volt increments like this so it's quite useful for being able to dial in your voltage fairly quickly and then press again to get it exactly what you want okay but supposing we wanted to change the voltage on channel 2 all we do is press the channel 2 button then when we twiddle it this won't change that one will and the outputs down here will be different when we actually enable them. At the moment nothing's being sent to the output. When we press the output button the settings we've dialed in here will be sent to the outputs. Okay so let's change channel 2 to 15 volts so we'll up it quickly here with the coarse settings and then there that's relatively pain free and we can do the same with the current. The current goes up to 3 amps maximum. Okay. And let's suppose we wanted 2.75. There you go. Alright. And then if you dial in all the settings you want and everything's good, what you do is you press output and then they both go live but I haven't obviously got any cables connected up at the moment so we're not actually sending that anywhere. 
This channel 2 button also doubles as the beep button. You can switch the beep on and off if you want to. This symbol here, which is on several of the buttons, means give it a long press for the alternative function. So if we give a long press on the channel 2 button, it will disable the beep. See what happens? It beeps and then the light changes to channel 1 to tell us that it, that it has done that change. So then if I was to press a button, it doesn't beep anymore. Okay, so I'm going to re-enable the beep because I actually quite like to know that the machine knows when I've pressed the button. Okay, so beep is re-enabled, so when I press a button now, it should beep again. Fantastic. What of the other buttons? Here we have the parallel button. Pressing this one parallels up the output so that you can have twice the current from, and that, that goes on to channel 1. It combines the outputs from channel 2 and channel 1 to give you twice the current capacity on the one channel. The serial button enables you to double up the voltage from 30 to 60 volts. The lock unlock button when you've got the outputs enabled, the lock unlock button, if you press this, it will lock the settings at the settings that they're currently at and it will prevent you from being able to change them. You can unlock it with a long press, but that's a good safety feature. The four other buttons we've got here are memories. You can have four memorized sets of settings and you can record the current settings by pressing a long press. There's memory one saved. And you can switch between the memories with a, with a short press. So that's the theory, most of the basic features. Let's have a go with it now, shall we? Okay, so I've hooked up one uh, pair of output wires on channel 2 and connected to those I've got a 12 volt 20 watt halogen bulb. So I'm going to dial in a maximum of 2 amps. Okay, and we're on channel 2, I'm checking, I've got that right, yes, excellent, so now if I press output the lamp should light fairly brightly. And it does. Great, so let's see what happens then when we dial down the voltage. Should dim. which it does. At 4 volts it's hardly lit at all. And back up to 12. Wonder if it can cope with 13. I bet it can. Yes. But we won't leave it there for long. So let's try it with fine control and it should change much slower. almost imperceptible I suppose. Just about make out that it's changed a bit now. Oh yeah, it clicks at around six and a half volts. Still lit but not much. You see the coils quite dim now. Okay, we'll take it down to two and then go back up in big big steps. Much, much faster, isn't it? Now we see that uh, if I actually move that out of the way, you might see better. You'll see that the current it pulls at 12 volts is about 1.7 amps. Now, if I was to decide that I wanted to limit that to 1.5, I can do that. I'll turn the output off first just to show you I'm going to limit it, it was set at 2, I'm going to limit it at 
and when I put the output back on it should show the light here to show that it's limiting you see the red LED on here shows you that it's limiting the current to 1.5 amps and it's kept it at 1.49 if I was to de-restrict that back up to 2 it's gone to constant voltage if I restrict it it's gone to constant current okay so now I'm going to show you some of the more advanced features of the IPS 3303D uh, down here you can see the fixed output supply we already talked about uh, I've pushed that over to the right hand setting which is 5 volts and I'm going to while we do the next experiment I'm going to show you that that supply is capable of powering this Raspberry Pi camcorder so now I'm going to show you how to combine the outputs in parallel uh, so that you can get double the current capacity by pressing this parallel button here you can double the output current capability of this port from 3 amps to 6 amps but you can't then use this port at the same time so basically it's, it's internally joining the outputs of 1 and 2 so that the output current can be doubled so the output from the red wire goes to the multimeter which is set to read the current and the other end of it goes to one end of these three halogen bulbs they're 20 watt bulbs each uh, and they run at 12 volts so that should bring us in a little under 5 amps of load so let's see what happens what you need to do is you press the parallel button and then you switch on the output at the moment I've got the voltage set to 12 which is the correct voltage that I want and I've got the output current set to 0 I think yes so you'll notice the little LED came on on the Raspberry Pi and it's booting up now because it's got its required 5 volts so that's just going to sit the way it sit there merrily doing its business while we do the rest of the experiment so now we need to dial in some current so what you should see is that whatever figure on here is shown will be double on here because that's measuring the real output and that's measuring the output just from effectively what's the channel one okay so let's dial some in and see what happens you should also see if I keep my arm out of the way you should also see that the halogen bulbs will get brighter and brighter as we go we're just about starting to show now and we're at 2 amps on here almost and almost 4 on the multimeter okay so let's go up a bit more so once we get to 3 on here it will beep and tell us it can't go any further if we try to go further than 3.2 it's telling you you're at the top of the range so here it's showing 2.4 and here it's showing 4.8 which is double and the lamps are nice and bright so that's how you use the parallel to get more current capacity otherwise we'd be limited to only 3 amps on this output but the only downside of that is that you can't use this one at the same time but it's very useful to be able to get higher currents than 3 amps if that's what you need and you see all the while down here the Raspberry Pi is working away merrily doing not very much apart from communicating with the Wi-Fi you may also be able to hear in the background the birds are a bit loud today but you may be able to hear that the, the cooling fan on the power supply is kicked in as we're obviously making it work quite hard so I'll just turn that down and then we'll show you how to use the opposite which is the serial function to get higher voltages now we're going to cover serial mode which enables you to basically add the voltage outputs from channels 1 and 2 together so each one's capable of giving out 30 volts uh, so if you if you take the plus from channel 1 and the minus from channel 2 when you've got the serial button pressed together you can add those two channels together 
and get up to 60 volts output. So the way that's activated is by uh, connecting the negative to the negative of channel 2, the positive to the positive of channel 1, then we press the serial button. Next you press channel 2 because we want to make sure that channel 2 is not current limited so we put that up to maximum then we go back to channel 1 and make sure that we've just got a teeny weeny bit of current because I haven't got a load on here I've just got it connected up to the meter then we'll connect up this channel just to show you that that's still working when I and then I hit the output button you should see yes the fixed channels coming on and the Raspberry Pi is coming on alright now on the meter you can see a very small voltage because we're not really doing anything but if I start cranking that up you should see the same as before with the current uh, whatever the reading is here it should be double on the multimeter so one volt two volts let's whack a few volts on there and see nearly 7 volts, nearly 14 volts let's just correct that slightly ok, and now let's see how far it will go we'll stop at 30 let the meter catch up, it's warning me here that I've got high voltage so that's 60 it will go up to 32 I think yes, that's the highest it will do so there you go, if you need a high voltage you can serial the two ports together to achieve that and as before the Raspberry Pi is just happily, merrily communicating with the Wi-Fi router on this channel so I'll shut that down and then I can turn off the output without risking destroying the Pi's file system okay that's shut down now so we can turn the outputs off so that covered most of the features the only thing I haven't really touched on which uh, goes a bit beyond the scope of this review is the there's a USB port on the back and in the manual it explains how you can use that USB port uh, with a cable and connect it to your computer in order to be able to control this power supply remotely using a computer which is pretty sophisticated and pretty advanced and uh, probably a little bit beyond the scope of this little review but if I have a play with it at some point in the future, I will make an update. So that was a review and tutorial of the Isotech IPS3303D benchtop DC power supply. The RS part number is 6842992, should you wish to order one. There's something in the region of £300. That might make your eyes water if you're a hobbyist, but they are aimed at professional electronic engineers and they do a simple job but they do it really well and I'm absolutely delighted with mine this was Alex Eames for Raspi.tv thank you for watching